Back in our project files, create a new script and name it Engine. This will be the power source for our drivetrain and where we'll begin its development. Most road-going engines work off the four-stroke combustion cycle, where we have a reciprocating piston attached to a rotating shaft through a connecting rod. When the engine makes power through the combustion stroke, the force acting on the top of the piston gets transmitted as a torque to the crankshaft through the connecting rod, which causes the shaft to spin by first inducing an angular acceleration through Newton's second equation of motion, which states that acceleration is the result of torque divided by the moment of inertia, which then increases the shaft's angular velocity by Newton's first equation of motion, which states that an object's updated angular velocity is the sum of its initial velocity plus the angular acceleration the object is experiencing multiplied by the time delta between the current time and the time of the initial velocity reading. We'll implement this simulation for real-time use by first using a predefined torque curve to evaluate the engine's current gross torques output based off the current engine speed and throttle. We can then subtract any frictional losses the engine experiences as a function with a constant component and a linear component dependent on engine speed in order to get the engine's net torque output. We can then integrate the engine's angular velocity using the aforementioned equations, and then convert the engine's angular velocity from radians per second into RPM, and use that for evaluating the engine's torque once again, completing our engine cycle. We'll start off by first commenting out the throttle input in our wheel script. We'll be disabling it until our drivetrain is complete and connected to our wheels. Then, in our newly created engine script, we'll start by setting our engine idle speed when our simulation starts, by setting the engine angular velocity to our predefined idle RPM using one of our two helper functions for converting between radians per second and revolutions per minute. We'll then set the throttle based off user input and use it alongside our current engine RPM to get the gross torque output of the engine using the engine's torque curve. We'll then subtract the frictional losses to get the net torque you the engine is producing, and use that to increment our engine speed. This engine speed, after being converted from radians per second to RPM, will be used to get the engine's torque for the next physics step, thus completing the cycle. Save the script and add it to an empty wheel attached to the vehicle named drivetrain. Define the engine's idle speed, torque curve, constant and linear friction parameters, and inertia before hitting play and quickly getting on the throttle. Looks like our engine speed is indeed updating based off our throttle input, but we currently have no way of enforcing our idle speed, and adding a rev limiter wouldn't be bad either. We could quite easily add both of them through a simple clamp that ensures our RPM doesn't exceed the range defined by our idle speed and redline, but a more realistic approach is to add some sort of idler controller to try and keep our engine idling automatically by modulating engine throttle and cutting off throttle altogether when the engine hits redline. Replace the throttle input variable currently being used to govern the engine's torque with a new variable simply named throttle. After getting the player's input, we're going to declare a new float called idler, which will act as a minimum value the throttle can be when the engine's RPM is in the idle range. We're then going to create an I enumerator we'll call throttle cutoff, which will trigger a bool to do just that when our engine's RPM exceeds redline. Save the script, define an idle throttle, redline, and throttle cutoff duration and then hit play. The idler circuit is working, but it's definitely a hassle having to stop and start the scene to dial in the circuit as we currently have no way of cranking the engine back up when it stalls a problem we can fix quite easily by adding a starter. We can add a starter by simply adding a starting torque to the engine's net torque output when the player holds the starter key down. We'll test the starter out by setting the engine's RPM to zero on startup. Save the script and don't forget to define the starting torque before hitting play and testing it out. Looking good. 
We now have an engine script that revs realistically, idles, has a rev limiter, and can stall and start back up. One last thing I'll add is a bit of instability to the idler circuit, giving the engine speed some fluctuation on idle. In recent years, recording clean audio of engines has become far more accessible with the advent of programs like Engine Simulator, allowing both developers and modders access to a practically infinite array of sounds for any engine configuration imaginable. I'll be leaving a tutorial on using Engine Simulator for audio clip acquisition in the video description. Once we have our audio clips, we can develop the system that will play them back. What we essentially want to do is interpolate between our audio clips in correspondence to engine speed and throttle. Using those two as inputs, we'll want to modulate each clip's volume off a triangle wave that overlaps with its neighboring clips, such that the volume level remains constant throughout the rev range. We'll also multiply the volume of the on-throttle clips by engine throttle and the off-throttle clips by the throttle complement. We'll then want to pitch each clip based off engine speed by dividing the current RPM by each clip's reference RPM. And with that, we have our playback algorithm. Let's go implement it in Unity. After importing our audio clips and making sure they have the following import settings, create an empty named audio and parent it to the vehicle. With the empty selected, click Add Component and create a new script named Engine Audio. In it, we're going to deploy our playback algorithm. We're going to start by creating a new class called Engine Clip, where we're going to store a reference RPM, an on and off throttle audio clip and source, and a bool for flagging if the audio clip should have a fall off a feature we'll use to keep our final clip's volume from falling off when we're past redline. Next, we'll create a constructor, where we'll first set the inputs to the aforementioned member variables, and then set some initial parameters for startup. Now in mono behavior, we'll grab a reference to our engine script, as well as references to all our engine clips that we'll set in the inspector. After setting up our engine clips on startup, we'll set the pitch and volume of each based off engine speed and throttle. Save the script and grab a reference to the engine script as well as all of your audio clips, and then hit play. Great! We're now able to make an audible connection to our engine speed and throttle input, and can continue to develop our drivetrain. 